This is an overview of the Titan performance prediction software for fixed wing SUAS. Let's take a look at the Titan performance prediction software for fixed wing SUAS. We'll jump right ahead with loading up the Falcon V2 configuration file and go through a couple use cases. So right off the bat, we can see a couple of general stats, optimal range as well as optimal endurance. We'll touch upon the inputs on the left here, which are used to get this output. But first, let's talk about a use case. So we've got all of these stats that we can look at and ask ourselves, what would happen if I added a kilogram of payload? So we can go over to the left and add a kilogram of payload and see how that affects our flight performance. We've got an all-up weight of 6.3 kilograms, a maximum range of 284 kilometers, and a maximum flight time if flown at the loiter speed of 4 hours and 55 minutes. Let's now take away the 1 kilogram payload and see what the results would be. We've got an all-up weight of 5.3 kg. We've got a cruise speed for optimal range of 16.12 meters per second, a max range of 331 kilometers, and a max flight time of 6 hours and 15 minutes with a loiter speed of 14.42 meters per second. So now that we've gone through that simple use case, let's talk about some of the data that we're seeing on the screen here. For optimal range, you have your cruise speed, your max uh, range, your safe range, which is determined by the 90% battery usage. So this means 90% of your battery used up in flight will result in 298 kilometers of flight. We've got a power consumption of 131 watts at this cruise speed and an angle of attack of 3.2 degrees, which would directly correspond to the trim pitch in Ardu Pilot or PX4. Over on the right, we can see the optimal endurance. This is if you'd like for it to fly for a long, the longest time. You would want to fly at the loiter speed, which in this case is 14.42 meters per second. You'd have a max loiter time of 6 hours and 15 minutes if using all the battery. If using the safe margin, aka 90% in this example, you'd get 5 hours and 37 minutes consuming a power of 120 watts with a trim pitch of 5.32 degrees. Over here on the graphs we've got the lift to drag ratio. We can click into it and see all the different uh, different points along the graph if let's say you would want to infer at 25 meters per second if I want to fly really fast my lift to drag ratio is going to be somewhere around 8.5. Similarly with other graphs we've got range here an often question we get is, what would happen if I flew at full throttle? Well, let's see what our max speed is, 44.87 meters per second. So we're going to go over to that max speed here and answer that question. With a safe range of 78 kilometers at full throttle, or a max range of 87 kilometers at full throttle at max speed. These are, of course, extremely handy when planning a mission or determining how far you'll go given certain parameters. We've got our endurance. This is flight time. Uh, the top line would be your max endurance using up all of the battery. The bottom line would be using 90% of the battery or 80% or whatever you define in here. So this is extremely useful for determining given a flight speed, which is the x-axis, how many hours you could expect to fly for. A good example, if I want to fly relatively fast at 20 meters per second, I will get to fly this Falcon V2 for 3.71 hours if I use 90% of the battery. If I use the entire battery, I'd be able to fly for 4.13 hours. Now you can see here's a blue line for cruise speed, here's an orange line for loiter speed, the red line is uh, stall speed, and the gray line is the maximum achievable speed given this power system. Climb rate this will show you how fast you can climb and it also shows you at what speed you can climb vertically till. So over here we'll see as long as your flight speed is under 13.92 meters per second you can climb vertically. Um, this uh, orange graph here is your climb rate. How many meters per second you'll gain in altitude uh, based on your airspeed. Here's a graph of your drag, showing the total drag, the parasite drag, as well as the induced drag. This is extremely helpful for lowering the drag during the development phase of, an, of a UAS, 
or seeing the effects of adding antenna or other parasitic elements. Here's your efficiency graph. This will show you how many watt hours it will use per kilometer. So we can see if we cruise at 16.12 meters per second, we will have the least amount of watt hour per kilometer usage, and this would be the ideal cruise state for maximum range. We've got our power consumption based on airspeed. So based on how fast you're flying, we can see that we've got an exponential increase in power consumption. And lastly, the fuselage AOA. This will show you at which uh, angle of attack of the fuselage or the whole airplane to cruise at uh, in order to maintain a certain flight speed. So all the way up to about 20 meters per second, you'll want somewhat of a positive AOA. And any higher than that, the airframe is making so much lift that you'll actually need to point your nose down slightly in order to maintain altitude at speeds above about 20 meters per second. So there's a lot that can be gained from the output of the graphs. Now let's quickly touch upon some of the inputs. We can see here that we start off with the craft name, obviously the name of the aircraft. The CDO, this is a drag value. All of these CFD parameters can be had from CFD software such as OpenVSP or ANSYS. We've got the Oswald Span Efficiency Factor, which is denoted as E. We've got the wing area in meters squared got the wingspan in meters, you've got the maximum coefficient of lift, in which case for this it's 1.3 since it's got flaps, we've got the zero AOA coefficient of lift, we've got the empty mass of the airplane. This number can be predicted using the CFD software since we know the surface area of the model as well as the density of the filament that we'll be printing with. So before the 3D printed aircraft even exists, we have a pretty great and accurate measurement of the empty mass. Here we've got the payload mass. Um, if we were using a payload, this would be a non-zero value. And then we've got a total airframe mass. So let's just add a one kilogram payload. And you can see the airframe mass has gone up by, three, uh, by a kilogram and now it's 3.2 kg. We've got the uh, propeller efficiency down here as an input. This number is directly from APC's website for the propellers that they uh, create. They do publish the uh, propeller efficiency data at different cruise speeds, different wattages, and different RPMs. The motor efficiency is something that can be had from the motor data sheet from the manufacturer of the motor. We've got the payload power consumption. Since in this example, we've got a one kilogram payload, we'll say it's actually consuming, let's say, 25 watts of power and of course all of our results will be different as a result we've got the avionics power this is how much power the servos the flight controller the basics of the airplane are consuming at any given point in time we've got the max electrical power this is all of your motors in this case is a twin motor so both of your motors uh, maximum wattage added up so this is 1400 watts so each motor would be 700 watts of course for your purpose, you would look at the motor data sheet, see the maximum wattage of the motor, and uh, put that in this field. Now we get to the interesting part. This is your battery for your lithium-ion battery. Uh, you've got the number of cells in series and the number of cells in parallel. So typically, lithium-ion batteries will come in something like a 6S4P, or in this case, a 6S7P. Now you can see we've got a slew of cell types. We know the We've got data in the back end for uh, the amount of watt hours they'll give up based on the current that's being drawn, as well as detailed weight for each cell. This, uh, with the last two parameters here, allow for us to see the exact mass of the battery, as well as the total amount of watt hours we can expect out of this battery. And these are from real world test results, so they're extremely accurate. Construction mass is how much mass is added to the battery as a result of building the battery pack. So that's the nickel strips from welding it, uh, maybe the wrap that goes around the battery. The connector mass is the amount of weight added to the battery due to having a connector on it and the large wire that comes out of the battery as your main lead wire. Environment, so air density, gravity, these are changeable factors as well based on your altitude. In future versions, we hope to have integration with weather directly to fill this in for the end user or operator. Miscellaneous factors. It's asking you, how much of your battery do you want to use? In general, it's not a good practice to use up 
all 100% of your lithium ion battery. So we stick to 80 to 90%. Uh, drag fudge factor. This is a number to modify the drag of the airframe. We've done extensive testing and arrived at 1.4 for specifically 3D printed aircraft. That accounts for the specific screen friction of the 3D printed UAS, as well as any parasitic elements such as antennas that are commonly used in 3D printed aircraft. We've got a button here to plot the previous results. So let's go ahead and turn that on and we're gonna add a bit more payload, maybe half a kg more payload, and we can see that we've got both the results on the screen at the same time so we can kind of get a visual ind indication of how much that has had an effect. Now let's take away the payload and you can see how the results differ. We'll go ahead and remove this option and this will show us the current configuration. We've got a clear all button to clear everything out, a duplicate button to duplicate this tab, as well as a theme button so we can have a light version or a dark version of the application. A couple last points to go over. It's got the ability to have multiple tabs so I can open up another aircraft and take a look at that simultaneously with the Falcon V2 and kind of compare their ranges. We've also got the ability to export to a CSV so you can open up all of this data in Excel. We've got the ability to save this configuration file, load configuration files, and the ability to duplicate the tab. So that just duplicated the Hawk onto another tab. So now I can go here, add a payload of half a kg, and I can quickly swap between the tabs to see that the difference the payload made. So all in all, this is an extremely useful tool. It's also within 5%, at least 5% accuracy in our tests. Most of the time it's within 1%, which is astonishing to us. And we hope to make it even more accurate and helpful as the development continues. Let's now take a quick look at the predictions versus real world flight performance. Here we've got a real life flight from Falcon V2 in the exact configuration as seen on the software with a 6S7P Samsung 50E battery. Here we can see from the real life flight using up about 90% of our battery. We flew for 300.4 kilometers on the ground and 303.8 kilometers if looking at airspeed. Our predicted safe range was 298 kilometers and in real life we flew 300. That's within 1% accuracy or less. Let's look at the efficiency over the air, it was 2.22 watt hour per kilometer, and on ground, it was 2.24 watt hour per kilometer, due to the differences in airspeed and ground speed due to wind and such. Let's take a look at our efficiency graph. At the cruise speed, at the recommended cruise speed, it's about 2.27, and in real life, it was 2.24. So that's again very close within a few percent or one percent accuracy. Now let's take a look at another example of a real-life flight versus the predictions. This is the Titan Hawk and it matches exactly with the configuration on the software. So this was flying with a 4S3P with LG MJ1 cells. We've got a predicted safe range of 153.5 kilometers. In the real world we flew in the air, this was on a windy day, 153 kilometers exactly. So that matches up within less than 1%. It's got an efficiency of 0.89 watt hours per kilometer in the air. And if we take a look at our efficiency graph at the recommended cruise speed of 15.56 meters per second, this recommends 0.87 watt hours per kilometer as the predicted value which in real life, again, was 0.89. So this is, again, within the realm of 1% accuracy. We've got a flight time of 176 minutes, which is roughly 2 hours and 57 minutes, 56 minutes. This recommends a flight time of 3 hours and 8 minutes, which is within the realm of accuracy as well. Thanks for your time. The Titan Performance Prediction software is now available for enterprise licensing on Mac, Windows, and Linux.